give up. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Fight forever and ever and ever and ever. First of all, let me just start off season two by addressing this. Every time I turn around and I go to one of these independent shows, the first thing people come to me to say, Brickhouse, why aren't you in WWE? Brickhouse, why aren't you in TNA? Well, you want to know why? What's that? I smell haters in the house. First of all, I applied to do the referee deal with WWE a few years back. And uh, the last thing that I was told was I had the job and I refereed a few months. Now, everybody knows the story about how I didn't get the referee job. But the real reason why I didn't get the referee job is because Jerry Lawler took his punk ass to Johnny Ace and goes, You know what? When I had the territory, Brickhouse was working for me in Memphis. Brickhouse owed me some money. And now that he's getting ready to come here, and basically I don't think Brickhouse is dependable. Jerry Lawler used his clout to go to Johnny Ace, who had the power to hire and fire. Long as Johnny Ace got a career maker or a career breaker, I will never, ever have a job in the WWE. And Johnny Ace, let me go by his dear John Larnatus. What did he ever do? Had a mediocre-ass career at best. The only thing Johnny Ace ever did was be the flag bearer for the freaking sheep hurdles. That's the only thing Johnny Ace did. He bummed out in every other territory. So how did a guy like this get in a position to be able to hire and fire talent like myself? Can you imagine how many people, because Johnny Ace, his punk ass, had something against them that didn't get a job, that deserved a job with WWE? But Tony Guerrero told me years ago, he said, Brickhouse, you know, sometimes the best players don't always make the team. Tony Guerrero never spoke true words. Johnny Ace... Kiss my black ass, you sorry son of a bitch. You know what? I don't need you nor WWE to fucking make it in professional wrestling. I'm still doing my thing. I'm still going around the country. I'm still kicking ass and taking names like Brickhouse like to do it. So, Johnny Ace, fuck you. Now, let's move on to something else. They asked me about TNA. Well, I recently tried. When I saw that the Nasty Boys had gotten a job on TNA... And Eric Bischoff and Hook Hogan were, you know, like behind the scenes running things. And I saw the Nasty Boys and I saw what those fat, out of shape, one of them blowing up, going to the damn ring. I said, surely to God, if they got a job, I know damn well Brickhouse can get a job. So what do I do? I go to one of the shows in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I talked to the people after the show was over. I talked to D-Lo. I talked to Kevin Nash. I even talked to Jeff Jarrett. They all told me the same thing. Brickhouse, you look good. You're taking care of yourself. Great. Call up Terry Taylor. Talk to Terry Taylor, and we sure we can find something for you. This is what Jeff told me. Lo and behold, I call up Terry Taylor, which I was led to believe that we were very good friends during our Mid-South days. Well, anyway, I talked to Terry Taylor on the phone. Terry Taylor goes, Brickhouse, he said, send me your most recent match. And that way I can make sure that, you know, you can still work and you still look good. And we don't make the same mistakes that we made when we brought the Nasty Boys in. So I dig up a tape, get it together, send to him, and then take some recent photos to show what great shape I'm still in. And I send it to him. All of a sudden, Terry Taylor's not getting back with me. And I'm thinking, man, should I call these people or what? But lo and behold, I finally reach him on the phone. I go, Terry, 
I sent you the tape. I sent you the pictures to show you how I look recently. What's going on? Do I have the job or not? And you know what he told me? He goes, Brickhouse, he said, due to the circumstances of your age, we're not ready to present you with a contract because of the fact of your age. And I'm thinking to myself, my age? How in the hell can you tell somebody that they're too old to do something when I'm still doing this shit every weekend? Everywhere I go, I'm still in the best shape. People tell me I haven't lost a step. I still perform in the ring just as I did, you know, for the last five or six years. Nothing changed. Maybe just gained a little weight. But to tell somebody that they're too old and not even give them the opportunity when they get those fat, out of shape, fucking goddamn lethargic, nasty boys a shot on the motherfucking TV and then tell me I'm too freaking old. Terry Taylor kissed my black ass. You know what? Just because of the fact that you had a mediocre career. So what do you want to stop me from coming in? Because you know I would get over with TNA. But the powers that may be. God is kind. Because I wind up getting a job with him any freaking way. So fuck you Terry Taylor. Now let's move on to something else. You know I want to address this thing right here. <clears throat> First of all I told you who stopped me from going into WWE. I told you who I think stopped me from getting a wrestling job with TNA. And that's Johnny Ace and Terry Taylor. As long as those two had anything to do with hiring and firing, I probably would never, ever get a job. But thank God they aren't the only ones that run wrestling companies. So fuck you, Johnny Ace. Fuck you, Terry Taylor. You know, eat shit and die for all I care. Now, I want to get on to something totally, totally left field and off the bat. You know, I've done things in pro wrestling uh, all over the world. Some of the things I'm ashamed of, some of the things I'm quite proud of, some of the things of I probably will never speak about again. But one of the things, I lived out all my fantasies. One of the things that I want to tell you guys about, because if I talk about other people, I have to talk about myself first. And one of my main things that I never accomplished in wrestling, had nothing to do with wrestling is, I never, I did all my fantasies, you know, the two on three, you know, the orgies, all kind of shit like that. But I never in my life fucked a midget. I wanted to always fuck a midget. And lo and behold, there was this, this, this little people, you know, that was on the card one night. And this girl came up and her name was Diamond Lil. And I'm looking at her, I see her tight little like, round ass, some little thick little thighs. And I'm thinking, damn, I did everything else, but I never had sex with a midget. And I made that my mission and I so I'm going to have me a midget. And you know, I followed her from room to room and she was talking and we finally started talking. And I thought I had it in the pocket because she told me she wanted to be a stripper. That's right. Diamond Lil's main fantasy was she fantasized about being a stripper. And I told her, of course, I would tell anybody anything back there in those days that they wanted to hear to get between their legs. Well, I was determined I was going to have this midget. And I said, baby, you want to be a stripper? You talking to the man. I can make that happen. I can put that down for you. It's as good as done. Which, to be honest with you, I didn't really lie to her because... I knew all the strip club owners in Memphis. I knew all the strip club owners, you know, around Nashville. And I really could have got her going. And I'm thinking that, hey, even swap ain't no swindle. If I can get you into the stripping business, then you strip for me. And, hey, how many deals have been made on the casting couch? I'm no fucking different. But anyway, to make a long story short, I badgered and I bitched and I pissed and moaned. I said, Diamond Lil, come on, baby. I can make this happen. You show me a good time tonight, by this time next week, I can have you in the strip club. Not just stripping, but as a feature, you know? Yeah, it won't be no freaking circus. It won't be no sideshow deal. You will be featured in a bona fide club. But she wouldn't put it out. She would not give me anything for nothing in the world. One of the few girls that ever turned me down was Diamond Lil. I just thought I would show y'all that I'm quite honest and I tell on myself too. This is what you get when you watch Brickhouse TV. You're going to hear the truth and I'm going to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Damn skip it. Diamond Lil, if you're out there, I still to this day have never fucked a midget. So if you're out there watching and you feel like now you want to take a chance on that, I still got them connections with the strip club. Give me a call, baby. 
Because I still want your midget ass. I still want to tap that ass. So call me up and let's talk about it, okay? Diamond Lil. Nah, I just thought I would address that right there. But that's a true story. I didn't lie. That's, I really still want to take down a midget. And I'm going to do that because I ain't promised tomorrow. Right now, if there's any little people out there, you got to be fine. Got to have one of them little round bubble asses. Any of y'all out there want to try on Brick House, give me a call. Y'all know how to reach me. And I'll take care of you, baby. Now, let's move on. You see what I'm saying? Nowhere else but Brick House TV are you going to get some shiznit like this. Whoever can confess that they have fetishes of, of sleeping with a midget. Nobody but Brick House, baby. Now, let me just talk about this. A lot of things that I want to talk about, too. I tried to go into TNA. Well, even before that, I tried to get into Puerto Rico, which I've wrestled in Puerto Rico numerous times. But recently, I hear about two years ago, I talked to, to Carlos about coming into Puerto Rico. And one night I was on this independent show, and Dutch Mantel had heard that I had been talking to Carlos and was trying to get into Puerto Rico. Dutch Mantel comes up to me, Brick House, man, hey, I can help you. I can get you into Puerto Rico. Just let me make a few calls. Well, me being sometime the idiot that I can be, I listened to Dutch and said, okay, figure, good, cool. Call up Carlos and put in a word for me. But you know what that sorry son of a bitch did? He called up Carlos, and all the while, I'm thinking he's helping me. He's bearing the knife in my back because I walked out on him when he booked Memphis, Tennessee once. Dutch Mantel shares with him being the sorriest, worst fucking booker in the wrestling business. Dutch Mantel and another man share that honor. I'd have to flip a coin to fucking see who would be the sorriest, I mean, worst booker in professional wrestling ever been. It's between Dutch Mantel and Mike Samples. Those are the two worst bookers I've ever seen. And trust me, I've seen a lot of bookers in my day. Dutch Mantel was booking the Memphis Territory. And of course, I've always had a guarantee. That whenever I wrestled, they always guaranteed my money. Brickhouse never worked off no damn door, okay? I always had a guarantee. So one night, Dutch, I did, I took him with a book, and he came to me, and he goes, Brickhouse, I'm sorry to tell you, but I can no longer guarantee you your guarantee. You're going to have to work off the door like everybody else. And I looked at Dutch, not being hostile, not being disrespectful. I said, well, Dutch, I said, if you can't guarantee my guarantee, then what you're doing is guaranteeing me that my services are no longer needed. See ya. And I walked out and I called up Eddie Graham and I was in Florida wrestling four days later. Dutch never forgave me for that. But it was just business. Hey, I told a man I was leaving. If you don't work for a guarantee and, you know, you work for the door starting out that way, great. But when you have a guarantee and then they take it away from you, why would I continue working? Why would they give me a guarantee after that if I would have worked for them? So the bottom line is, Ernie Ladd told me years ago, if they short you a dollar or $100, don't wrestle. So whenever I got my check, if it was short, I didn't go out and wrestle. So they stopped giving me my check before my match, which I couldn't help that. But uh, I pulled that on Jerry Jared about three times. They gave me my check in Evansville, and one time they shorted me $10. And I was the main event against Jeff Jarrett. I kindly packed my fucking bag, put the belt in the fucking bag, and took off in my car. Didn't let anybody know I was gone. When the main event came up, nobody knew I had left. Hey, it was like Brickhouse was scared to come to the ring. But then the next day, Jerry Jarrett called me up and said, what happened? And I'm, I'm thinking, this man must think I'm a blooming fucking idiot. I said, well, you know what happened? He goes, no, what happened? I said, my check was short. And he act like he had amnesia. Short? Are you kidding me? Now, this is a man who signed the fucking checks. And he act like he didn't know the fucking check was short. You get cut. They come to your desk. They come from your desk. You have to sign the motherfuckers. You know what you're signing. You know what every guy that worked your territory is making because you're the payoff man. So you didn't know my check was short. He goes, well, what are you going to do to make this straight? I said, I'm not the one that broke our deal. I showed up, 
ready to put in my work in the rain, ready to wrestle, ready to do what I promised you were on the services that I would do. I would deliver my body to you from 7 o'clock to 10 and wrestle for you, and you would pay me X amount of dollars. And you failed to do that. So you don't understand why I left the territory? Come on, get real. But anyway, Dutch Mantel never forgave me for that. And me, like an idiot, I'm a very forgiving person. I never thought about Dutch held that against me. I never thought about it until Ken Wayne told me one day. Ken Wayne said, man, he said, sorry about Puerto Rico. I said, what do you know about Puerto Rico? He said, I'm sorry they didn't bring you in. He said, you know, I booked Puerto Rico myself for a few years, and I talked to Carlos the other day, and he was telling me he was thinking about bringing you in. But then he said Dutch called and told him that you had walked out on him and that you was undependable and couldn't be dependent on to make shows and hard to do business with. So that's why he didn't bring you in. And I thought automatically right there, that motherfucker, he perpetrated to be a friend and turned out to stab me in the fucking back. Well, you know what, Dutch Bantel, if I ever see you on an independent show, understand this right now. I'm saying this in front of all the whole internet on Brickhouse TV. If I ever see you on an independent show, I will walk up to you and I'm going to slap slob out your fucking mouth, you bitch. You bitch-ass punk bitch. That's what I'm going to do to you, Dutch Bantel. Now, let's move on because it's making me hot just thinking about it. <clears throat> now, I want to move on to something else. But first, I want you to understand one thing. Now, if I offend anybody out there with my language, if I offend anybody out there watching and you got your children, you ain't monitoring them what they're watching, it ain't my fucking fault. You understand what I'm saying? I've been in the wrestling business going on 30 years, and this is the way we talk. I don't tone it down. I don't lighten it up. Even my girlfriend sometimes. Well, why are you yelling? Why are you screaming at me? Why are you cussing? It's just the way I talk. I'm like a sailor. I use a lot of profanity, so if you don't like it, cut the fucking thing off right now and tune in and watch Disney Channel or something. Because right now, you're watching Brick House TV, and you're going to get the shits knit told like it's supposed to be told and how it's supposed to be told with conviction. The, the way it's supposed to be told. When I need to throw in a fuck here and a kiss my ass there and a punk ass bitch there, I'm going to do it. And if you got a problem with that, then Brick House TV ain't for you. Okay, I'll see y'all soon for segment two of Brickhouse TV. Peace out.